Hello all, I'm Sri Ranjini, working at Samsung Semiconductor India R&D as an embedded system engineer and primarily responsible for the Ethernet IP driver development. Before we start our presentation, let me tell you a short story. Initially, when I started working on Ethernet, there was a situation where I need to know the basic information of the network interface. I started using ifconfig. I was aware that ifconfig gives some basic information, while ifconfig is good for some basic information about network interface. But for some advanced operations and information, we need to have something better than this. It was then while exploring, I came across another utility in Linux named ethtool, which we can uh, help to extract many meaningful or internals of the network interface. And also it's open source so we can add new features to it. Ever since I started working on ETH tool, it was fascinating me and I tried in improving the tool. This is the result of my work and experience with this tool in the past couple of years. In this talk, I would explain what all issues I encountered while working on developing and validation of Ethernet IP. And uh, I have taken the example of Designware Ethernet QoS IP and Automotive SOC from Synopsys in this presentation. So how this IP is helping to resolve most of these issues and how we utilized ETH tool to explore and get the best out of Ethernet IP. Okay, let's begin. On behalf of my co-author Ravi Patel, I welcome you all to the presentation on ETH tool, a diagnostic approach for network issues in Linux. Let me quickly walk you through the agenda of this presentation. First, we will see about introduction to Ethernet. We will see about standard Ethernet and we will see about automotive Ethernet. Then we will see the need of debugging and performance tuning of a network interface. What are all the issues we are commonly facing and what are all the tools available to debug those issues? Then we will see about Mac management counters. What are Mac management counters and how they are beneficial in debugging any issue. Then we will see why we have chosen ETH tool to implement this feature. What are the benefits of uh, implementing this feature in ETH tool? Then we will see our work, which, which will contain the, what implementation we have done in the user space and in the kernel space. Then I will explain you one real use case, which we encountered while working in Ethernet. Then that I will show two use cases, which will show the result of our work. Then finally, I will conclude with the future scope. Okay, now let's have a look on Ethernet, standard Ethernet. We all know that Ethernet is a set of technologies and protocols that is primarily used in LANs. It, is, it, it provides a service up to data link layer. At the data link layer, Ethernet divides the data stream received from the upper layers and encapsulates it into frames before passing them onto the physical layer. Ethernet has gone through four generations like standard Ethernet, fast Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet, and 10 gigabit Ethernet. Standard Ethernet. It can transmit data at the rate up to 10 Mbps speed. And fast Ethernet have a speed limit to 100 Mbps. The 100 based TX standard has become the most popular due to its close compatibility with the 10 based Ethernet standard. The Gigabit Ethernet works at 1 Gbps speed, which is 1000 base T. The most important difference between Gigabit Ethernet and the fast Ethernet include the additional support of full duplex operation in the MAC layer and at the data rates. 10 Gigabit Ethernet is the fastest and the most recent Ethernet standards. It is 10 times faster than the Gigabit Ethernet and it is entirely based on the use of optical fiber connections. Okay. Now, how automotive Ethernet differs from this? Automotive Ethernet is a subcategory of Ethernet as specified in IEEE 802.3. It operates over a single differential pair of wires and it is specifically designed for the low radiated emissions and immunity requirements of the automotive industry. The distance which these standards operates is also 
much shorter than other Ethernet standards, given the size of the vehicle they are intended to be used in. As we can see in this slide, automotive Ethernet have crossed three generations from year 2010 to 2020. In 2010, it started with the use of Ethernet in cars for diagnostics and firm firmware updates. Uh, it used 100 based TX standard, though this standard does not meet automotive requirements, but this interface is only used for diagnostics while the car is in service location. An exemption was made to allow its use. In 2015, Ethernet is used for camera driver assist and video infotainment connections. In this model, Ethernet is used in point-to-point -point links and is noted being used as a shared medium for different interfaces. Currently, in the new model, switched 1G automotive Ethernet will interconnect all the domains in the car, meaning that Ethernet will be a shared medium. The new anatomy not only helps to reduce cost and weight, but also makes it much easier for the different systems in the car to cooperate. Nowadays, people expect car to be the, like their extensions of their home, where they can access all the devices they use at home, like um, uh, uh, the apps, social media, and um, real-time information, many more. So automotive Ethernet will be the solution for all these requirements. That's a pretty much about automotive Ethernet. It's time to think about why what is the need of debugging and tuning of the network and what are all the tools available for this purpose as we are working in linux probably we must have faced various network problems being working with a high speed ethernet ip the sheer volume of traffic on a super busy network makes it very tricky to diagnose any issues whenever an issue occurred we have to obtain all the required information using all needed tools to find out at what level of the network stack contains the bug. For example, we can use ifconfig or eth tool to get information about network interface, which includes status of the link, speed, offload parameters, and interrupts occurred, and number of packets got dropped during data transmission, and so on. We can use iperf to check the bandwidth availability and to validate whether the host target is accessible or not. We can use ping, trace route, or dig, which diagnose everything DNS. Another one popular command, netstat, which we use to get all information about TCP connections. Hence, being a software people, it is very important to know about these tools as if maybe in real time, if a product is out in the market, maybe we don't have permission to connect JTAG or something to debug any issue occurred. At that time, all these software tools will help us to debug any issue. Okay. Let's see about Mac management counters. MAC management counter or MMC counter or the extension of the registered address space of the CSR module. It contains various registers to maintain the statistics of various received and transmitted packets. They also contain control registers for controlling the actions of registers like uh, there are two uh, status registers containing the interrupt generator during transmit and receive and interrupt enable registers for uh, transmit and receive. The MMC counters are free running. There is no separate enable for the counters to start. If a particular MMC register or MMC counter is present in the RTL, it starts counting when the corresponding packet is received or transmitted. The width of each MMC counter is 32 bit by default. So you can individually change the width to 16 bit for a selected MMC counter during configuration. These MMC registers are very useful when it comes for debugging and monitoring different types of packets, which is essential in automotive application. Okay, so though many tools are available for network tuning and debugging, why we are focusing on ETH tool? ETH tool is very versatile. It can be used for various scenarios like configuring features such as TCP segmentation offloading, TXRX checksum offloading, and etc. It is important to know about network tuning as we are dealing with high speed NICs like Gigabit Ethernet. As I said before, ETH tool is an open source utility. 
and can be enhanced as per the requirements of the new hardware features. If tool isn't concerned with the IP address or VLANs and subnets, instead, if tool lets us to manage, then configure the software drivers and the hardware settings that control the network interfaces. There are so many parameters that can be tuned by if tool. I have listed some of the few basic parameters, like we can select the port. We can check and change the transmit and receive mode of operation, either full duplex or half duplex. We can change the offload parameters. We can check and change the speed of transmission. We can control the auto negotiation of the network speed and mode of operation. We can change the physical address and it can be used to set wake on LAN option. And another important feature of each tool is getting the statistics of the network interface. We can get more detailed information of network interface like number of packets transmitted and received and count of various error packets. There is a reason for highlighting this because we have implemented a new feature in ETH tool, which is like an extension for the statistic showed currently in ETH tool. We will see about that in detail in further slides. Okay, we can install ETH tool in most of the Linux distributions. Uh, first of all, as we have to do is to update the APT package. Then we can use sudo apt install eth tool hyphen y option to install eth tool in Ubuntu systems. And uh, if we are using Fedora or CentOS system, means we can use sudo dnf install python3 eth tool command to install eth tool. Let's have a look on eth tool architecture. Eth tool is a command line utility that resides in the Linux user space. It provides consistent access to networking commands directly through Bash. It runs directly from and integrates with Bash while being interoperable with a regular way of accessing underlying configuration files and automation. As we see in this slide, ETH tool uses IOCTL interface to communicate with the kernel. Once the ETH tool IOCTL is called, it will check for the relevant ETH tool ops in the respective driver and do the operation accordingly. Okay, so how this ETH tool is communicating with the kernel? In ETH tool interface, all information are passed in the form of requests and replies as defined as macros in ETH tool.h UAPI header. The ETH tool command enables you to query or control the network driver and the hardware settings. As you can see in this slide, ETH tool requests are divided into three categories like get, set and action. Get requests are, the, are sent by the user space application to retrieve some information. They do not contain any message specific attributes. They do not contain any message specific attributes. Kernel replies with the corresponding information by passing a reply message. If the data has to be modified, that can be done by passing set request with the uh, corresponding attributes which we have to modify. Replies to most of the set command will be error code. And if the kernel provides any additional data, it is sent in the form of reply. Most of the cases set command needs pseudo permission to apply the changes. We most commonly use get and set category request. Action is used in case if the user wants to perform any specific action. So as you see in this slide, for example, if, if the get request has been sent from user space to kernel space, like if the user want to get the link info, the message will be sent like ETH tool message link info get. And the response will be like a ETH tool message link info get reply. If the user want to set any property in link info means the message will be like a ETH tool message link info set. This will be passed from user space to kernel space and the kernel replies with the appropriate notification reply message. And if the user wants to perform any action, like here in this case, if the user wants to perform any cable test, the message is passed from the user space to kernel spaces ETH tool message cable test act. And the kernel replies with the appropriate notification message. Okay, let's see how the IOCTL communication is happening in ETH tool. The flowchart shows how the user space command ETH tool ends up invoking the dev ETH tool on the kernel side. 
the interface between the user space and the functions is the IOctal system call. As we see in this flowchart, ETool uses SAOC ETool IOctal to communicate with the kernel. When an IOctal call occurs, do IOctal function gets invoked in the Linux kernel in which dev IOctal function call is happening. Inside dev IOctal function, all the IOctals defined in the Linux kernel is added in a switch statement. So that when SAOC ETool gets called, that particular switch case will get executed. Dev ETool function will get called. All the ETool routines are added in the dev ETool function. Hence, depending on the function called, particular ETool routine will get executed. Here we go. We will see what modifications we have done in ETool user space side to, to get the MMC register details. We have declared a new option in ETool to get the MMC information like with a flag called show MMC and a function called do G MMC stats. This do G MMC stats function take command as an argument and will call another function called do G MMC. This uh, inside this do G MMC function currently we have used get string set function which will do an IOctal call to get the MMC register information and the respective size of the statistics so that we can allocate enough memory. Now we will see the kernel side implementation what we have done to get the MMC register details. As I said before, SAOC E tool will get call and along with the command of get string fit. So inside dev E tool function, it will check for the command. Since we have passed get string set function, e tool get strings function will get called. Inside e tool get strings function, we have added a separate case to call stmac get mmc stat function. This stmac get mmc stat function is defined inside stmac e tool.c file. In the stmac e tool.c file, First, we have declared a separate structure for the MMC registers, which will contain the bitwise information. This structure contains bit index and the bit name. Like this, we will be adding a structure for all the registers with the bitwise information. And we have added a small function to convert the decimal value of the register into a 32-bit binary value. In the stmac get, C, get MMC stats function, First thing we are doing is read the register value. So first we will read the register MMC register value. Then we will be passing it to the decimal to bin function to convert it into a 32 bit binary value. Then we are checking for each bit, whether it is set or not. And according to that, we are passing the bit name and the, if it is set, it is, we are making us enabled. And if it is not as we are making us disabled and we are copying all these strings into a common buffer. Finally, this buffer is passed back to the user space. So we saw our implementation, what we have done to uh, in the kernel space and the user space to get the MMC register details. What made us to implement this? While working in the Ethernet IP, one, one time we faced the issue like our if config shows these many errors on the TX side, but the Ping flood test with a different packet size shows there is no packet drop, but the error status was increasing when the packet size is more than 100 bytes. And we are having one more issue like in the MTL, we have set the disable transmit status field. This caused an issue in updating the status field in the TX descriptor. So we are unable to find what error occurred. Does it mean the software won't be able to find what or error occurred? It was then while exploring, we got to know about MMC counters. MMC counters have information about the interrupt status, interrupt mask, and various other registers to show how many packets got dropped because of that particular error. But the current e tool implementation does not support the uh, support to show the register details of the MMC control register or MMC interrupt status register, interrupt mask registers. We have added support to get the value and the bitwise information of the MMC.
So we have added extra support to show the register value and the bitwise information of the interrupt status register and MMC control register and interrupt mass register. So using this, we were able to find that underflow interrupt have occurred and we are able to find number of packets got dropped due to underflow error. Then this helps us to resolve the issue. As we saw our implementation, now we will see our first use case. Uh, we have taken MMC control register in DWC equest registers is the very first and the basic MMC register, which have bitwise information that is very useful for debug purpose. This MMC control register value is not displayed in the current tool implementation for displaying MMC registers. We have added additional support for the MMC control register so that user gets more detailed information about the critical register in the user space itself. As you can see in this slide, this is how the information looks like when we give a each tool command. We have given show MMC flag and the device name as each zero. You can see it displayed the first the value of the MMC control register and shown the each bitwise information like particular bit is enabled or not. Next, exam, next use case we have taken is for MMC RX IPC interrupt mask. The current implementation of the ease tool shows this value of the register as a big number as shown in this slide. It is very difficult for the user to decode and interpret the bitwise information. We have added additional support to get all bitwise information of this register. As you can see, we can we, first we will get the value of the register, then each bitwise information like a particular bit is enabled or disabled. So we saw our implementation output and what made us to develop this. Now we will see our final conclusion and future scope for this work. We are able to enhance ETH tool user space utility to capture some of the critical debug registers of designer EQS controller and present a readable content instead of just dumping the register values. We modified the designer EQS driver in the kernel by adding a required ETH tool hops hooks to get all the MMC register value and the bitwise information of MMC control register, interrupt status register, interrupt mask registers as defined in EQS IP. This implementation is helping us to get all the information via ETH tool command line. The user can simply use this tool, to, tool for their self-diagnosis. Future scope involves implementing this functionality in ETH tool for other MMC registers and upstreaming the source code to the Linux mainline community. Please feel free to ask any doubt regarding my session. I thank you all for joining this session and I thank whole Linux Foundation committee members for giving us this opportunity to showcase our work. I hope our work will help the users to reduce some of their burden in debugging this in some of the issues which needs MMC register details. Once again, I thank you all for attending this session. Have a great day.